Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I believe that in 2019, it is the best time for you to become a professional or very exposed photographer. And for that, you need to master Photoshop. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I take a photo that was really boring and I make it amazing in Photoshop in roughly about 10 minutes. Mastering Photoshop to take a photo from boring to amazing is so vital. For example, I made this cover this month using a photo where I really made a photo from boring to amazing using Photoshop. And so it's important if you want to get exposure. Also, I just came out with a new book on New York and I'm giving you one for free. Last week, Mr. Paco Maroto won the challenge and he's going to get this new book. So how do you win? All you have to do is leave me a comment under this video. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you would like to learn. And I will pick somebody and send him a new New York book. All right, let's jump right into it. If you need to download the source files, all you have to do is click the link that's below any of my YouTube videos here. And it's going to take you to this page. Put in your email address. Click sign up for free. Put in your first name, last name, and put in a password. And voila, it takes you to your library and, it just, and you just click on view and you got the, all the source files, all the Sony A7R files. Download the source files to follow along. All right, so I was shooting uh, the uh, Hotel de Ville, the town hall, the city hall of Paris, and they had this amazing carousel, and I tried different framing, you know, with long exposure, uh, with like a short exposure. I turned around it to find the right composition. I love to have like a foreground element and a middle ground and a background, so I wanted this as a foreground. And you know, I tried long exposure, I tried short exposure every time. This one I didn't like because there was like a house in front, a little small box. I tried different exposure. And finally, I went all the other side here. And this is the photo we're going to retouch, exactly this one. But there's a lot of problem with this photo. Right now it looks really boring to me and I'm gonna make it amazing using Photoshop. And by the way, if you stay until the end, I'm gonna show you how I export this photo for Instagram, for Facebook, and for 500px. So stay until the end. All right, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm in Lightroom, but this could be Camera Raw, same settings. I'm gonna open up the shadows, you know, boost the whites, do my black point, bring down the highlights, very important when you have a lot of CD lights. I don't like the colors, I think it's too yellow, so I'm gonna add some blue and maybe add a bit of magenta. Uh, here we have a you know, spot here, so I'm gonna take the spot hitting brush tool and I'm gonna erase that. Okay, so that's what I did in Lightroom. But to make this photo really straight, I really wanted the carousel and the seat hole to be straight. I went a little too low and I'm missing a lot of the sky. So I'm gonna recreate some sky in Photoshop and I'm gonna change the sky and I'm gonna add a whole bunch of things Stay until the end, you won't believe the changes. All right, so I'm gonna right click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna crop this photo and get back some of the sky. So I'm gonna take the crop tool, I'm gonna to clear it to make sure it's, uh, uh, there is no settings on it and I'm going to go up and I wanna get back all this sky here and you see uh, I just want that much floor and that much sky. I'm happy because the photo is straight but I'm missing some sky and I'm gonna do a sky replacement, but to do it right, we first need to fill in that empty sky with this blue. So I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna use a new option that you have in Photoshop CC 2019, which I love so much. And first I'm gonna make a selection of what I'm missing here. So I'm gonna take the marquee tool uh, here and I'm just gonna make a rough selection of this. This has to be sort of blue sky, okay? And um, so how to do that? Well, I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna take this new option here, Content Aware Fill. This only works if you're a Creative Cloud member. If you're not a Creative Cloud member, I got an amazing offer on my website, photosurge.com slash gear. Uh, check the gear page. Anyway, so the way this works is very simple. What you see is in green is what Photoshop is gonna take into account to create the sky I'm missing. But I don't want, see right now, and this is what it looks like if I just click OK, I'm getting this in the sky, which I don't really want and I'm getting this in the sky, which I don't really want. So how to prevent that? Well, by default, you've got a minus brush, and I'm just gonna minus out, I'm just gonna tell him, uh, anywhere I'm brushing, I'm telling Photoshop, do not take this into account for the sky you wanna create. Okay, and voila, I'm gonna go just do a rough thing, that should be enough. And in real time, this is going to update here on the right side. So this should disappear, boom, it did and this did, and that's all. 
So it's really easy. I'm forcing Photoshop to use just a sky to replace this rectangle that we're missing on top. Okay, I'm gonna press OK. Command D to undo, and I'm gonna inspect my sky, make sure it's kind of clean. Sometimes you have to do some clone stamping. Yeah, a little bit of clone stamping, uh, maybe here. Yeah, it's pretty clean, it's pretty clean. So I'm gonna take the uh, S for stamp tool, and I'm gonna make it a bit bigger using the Alt and Control key on your keyboard, and you move your mouse from left to right to make your, your brush a little bigger or smaller. And I'm gonna press the Option key to take whatever here. I think there is something weird here, but I can hardly see it. I think it's kind of clean. Maybe here, I just wanna clean that up a little bit. It actually did, it's funny because I it did a really good job compared to the first time I tried it. Uh, I had a lot of corrections to do, and this is really clean. Okay, perfect. So right click fit on screen. So now I got a blue sky, but it's boring. I need to replace it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Windows Libraries, and here is all my sky. And again, I'm giving you that sky. It's an amazing sky. I'm giving it to you and it works really great for night photography. Now, when you do sky replacement, you need to make sure you use a sky that's gonna kind of work for the time of the day. So I'm looking for what? For a blue hour sky, but it's a better one than this one. And I got one here, right here, which I really like, which is a blue hour sky. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close that. And I'm gonna put this, I like the red that's here. So I'm gonna put this maybe here. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Voila. Okay, I'm gonna press enter. And then, so it looks kind of weird. I want to mirror this sky so we get more of the red. So I'm gonna press Command J on my keyboard. Command J duplicates the layer and wait for it. Command T, which is the most used shortcut in Photoshop. If there's one thing you need to know about Photoshop is Command T. And then I'm gonna right click, flip vertical, hold down the shift key on my keyboard, move this, move this, move this, until it perfectly mirrors the sky and press enter. And now I'm gonna take both of this layer, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on merge layer. So now the sky is just one layer. But you see, we see some of the ground that was there. So I'm gonna take S as a stamp tool, make my stamp a bit bigger, and I'm gonna press the option key and I'm gonna stamp here. I'm gonna click one time, and then I'm gonna go all the way, I'm gonna click another time. And boom, I took all of that out. And I can maybe do some more cleaning up. I wanna make sure it doesn't look too stamped. This looks kind of stamped here, so. And that's the thing that's good about sky, they're so random. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the sky out and I wanna make a selection. You see, the problem with night sky and blue hour sky is that if I use like multiply mode, it's not gonna blend well, it's gonna to be too dark. If I use soft light, it's kind of okay, or overlay, it's kind of okay, but it's, I don't like it. Honestly, what works better is normal mode and to make a mask. So how to make a mask? Well, I'm gonna click here and check this out. I'm gonna click select, color range, and I'm gonna make a selection of the sky. And here you have a setting called fuzziness. And I'm gonna move it to the right until I see that the whole sky is really white, meaning the sky is selected. Anything which is that blue is selected. And then we have some lamps here, and that should be good enough, maybe a little bit more to the right. So I'm like 184 fuzziness. And I'm gonna click off OK, and that's gonna make a selection of my sky. And then I'm gonna click here, Activate my sky and just click on the mask tool. Wait for it, one, two, three, and boom. We got a new sky, but we have to do a few corrections. First, I press Z and I'm gonna zoom in to see how it blended. It actually did a pretty okay job. Although there was lights and everything, it looks pretty real, but the sky is too bright. The sky is too bright. So what I'm gonna do is, and it's too blue to me. I wanna make it a little more red. So. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna make a curve adjustment, curve. And here, you see that little uh, icon, I'm gonna click that and that's gonna make it in a way that that curve is only gonna affect my sky and nothing else. So what do I wanna do? I wanna make my sky a little darker, yes sir. But I also wanna go into the reds and maybe just go up a little bit to add a bit of red. And that's it. And now I'm loving it. Now to blend that sky even better, I'm gonna lower the opacity of the sky a little bit it's gonna help blend it even better, uh, you know, around the lamps here. And I actually really like the blending that that did. It really did an amazing job. It doesn't always work. Uh, let's say if you had, let's say you wanted some different blending issues, I could go here on the mask, take a brush, make a very small brush, make that brush 
a very low opacity, like nine or under 10. And then remember on a mask, white reveals, black conceals. So you wanna make sure it's black because I want to hide some of my uh, sky here around the lamps. Just let me zoom in a little more, press B to get it back, just to help blend just a little bit more. You, you can hardly notice it because it's so subtle, uh, but I'm basically hiding this layer by painting black on the mask here, and it just helps to blend the effect a bit more. But honestly, it was hardly not needed. It was already pretty well, pretty well done. I'm, I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna do one last adjustment in Photoshop. So I'm gonna press Command Alt Shift E, or I could do this in Lightroom, but this is more a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm gonna do it in Photoshop. So I create a layer, I'm gonna right click and make this a smart object, convert to smart object, and now I'm gonna do a camera roll development on the top of that to finish up the photo. So camera roll filter, and now it's like I'm in Lightroom, so I'm gonna select a, the gradient tool, I'm gonna to click here on minus exposure, everything comes down to zero except the exposure, and I wanna darken the top of the sky here a little bit, voila. And I want to, I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom, but on the bottom, on top of making it darker, I'm going to add some clarity and even more darkness, maybe a bit of blue, just to sort of pretend and a bit of contrast to pretend that it was kind of raining. And then I'm going to take a little brush, click here, click the plus here. I want to add some exposure. I'm going to make sure my brush flow in density is around 80. And I want to add a bit of exposure just here where, and maybe add some minus clarity also on this part. Yeah, I just wanna make this glow even more, uh, you know, all around the carousel, around the lamps here. I think I wanna go a little stronger on my exposure. Yeah, maybe not the highlights. I don't wanna bring down the highlights too much, but just the overall exposure, make this shine. And voila. So let me see here, let's, I press F to see in full screen mode. And voila, that's how you go from boring to amazing. But now, how do you get it on Instagram to get really lots of likes? So first of all, I'm gonna press F to go back. I'm gonna export this for 500px and for Facebook. So on this one, I'm not gonna change the crop factor because a landscape mode works really great. So I'm gonna go File, Export, Save with the web. And I'm gonna make this, you see the width here? I'm gonna make this 2,000 pixels wide or 2,500. I find that 2,500 works great on 500px and Facebook with a quality of 60, that's good enough. Okay, I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna save it on the desktop. Now, for Instagram, Instagram, I did a video and you should watch it. I'm gonna put a link right at the end of this video on how to grow your followers in 2019 you need to be posting four by five uh, formats. Now this photo is definitely not four by five because if you put a landscape on your Instagram, you're not gonna get as much like and comments. In fact, I did some really heavy testing on that and I literally have 80% more like or comments for a good photo when it's four by five. So that's the rule, that's the game of, of the cropping and all the big guys on Instagram, people that have like 100, 200, 300, 400 following, you'll see they all do their photos in four by five, most of them. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go four by five. And here I'm just gonna move this around and find something that I like. Maybe something like this, I think it's good. Maybe a little bit more on the right. I don't wanna have this like in, inside, like it's easier cut. Yeah, maybe that's better. Um, so I'm hesitating between this, what's nicer, the carousel or the Hotel de Ville? I think the carousel is a little more interesting, but then I'm cutting the people. Um, yeah, I think the carousel, it just, it shines so much. I love that. Okay, and usually what I do when it comes to Instagram, I, I double click here on the camera roll filter and to get back to what I was doing, and I think on this one I wanna make an even stronger vignette on top. Uh, because it's a, uh, it's a smart object, it's gonna update. Yeah, I like that, it's kinda cool. So now I'm just gonna go to File, Export, Save for the Web, Legacy, and um, I'm, I'm gonna leave the size. Oh, by the way, the size are a little smaller because I didn't want this tutorial to lag too much, so I, I, when I imported it into Photoshop, I made the overall photo a little smaller, just so you know. And I'm gonna export this, export this onto the desktop, and I'm gonna call it Instagram, Instagram Carousel. And voila, and I'm gonna post both of that. Now, check out this video on how to grow your Instagram in 2019. I give you a lot more tips on that. You gotta watch it now.